A Chicago City Council meeting was raw and real. Residents tour into city leaders over the 35,000 illegal immigrants who have poured into Chicago. And the city is on a spending spree for those people who broke our laws to get here. Critics are accusing the city of prioritizing border crossers over minority communities in particular. Get them out of our communities because they don't deserve to be there. Downtown has three to four illegal families on every block begging for work and selling Kit Kat bars after a billion dollars was spent on them. Where is that money? Where is the money for the South Side and the West Side communities? Not another dollar for the illegals. If the crisis is so bad, the city council members who are so concerned to donate their salaries to the cause like a real public servant should. That's from a recent, uh, well, yesterday it was breaking live during this hour. That's from that city council meeting. And, and we could see everybody, but we played it for you anyway. Now we have so much more of it to play. Uh, Illinois has spent more than $1 billion of Chicago tax money already on the people who are there. So the Illinois governor thinks he has the answer to it all. He's blaming Texas. Abbott willfully planned the arrival of these individuals in locations and at times that would engender the maximum chaos for the city of Chicago. Think about that the next time a politician from Texas wants to lecture you about being a good Christian. And they shouldn't leave it to the governor of Texas who has no goal but to sow chaos and destruction. Kata Truss has lived in Chicago her entire life. Kata, how bad is it? It's really bad, and the sentiment of most of Chicago is that of the young lady, one of the young ladies that you heard, uh, Jessica. Um, the sentiment of Chicagoans are, are the, is the same. And I just listened to the soundbite with Governor Prisker, who wants to blame Governor Abbott. But I think that we have to be realistic in thinking about what the state of Texas was going through before they began sure. busing migrants here. And I don't think we really think about that. So we're looking at it now as Chicagoans receiving migrants from the state of Texas. But imagine what it must be like in that state of Texas on a daily basis where people are arriving. Our president, mm -hmm. uh, President Biden, has not done enough. He has not done enough to secure the borders. He has not done enough to go in and propose some legislation that he can uh, push forth himself mm. to change this situation. And I'm telling you, we are so angry here in Chicago, which has yeah. been a Democratic stronghold for most of its eternity. Um, this year, we're working to turn Chicago red. We are so angry with Pritzker and with President Biden and with our mayor that we have decided that we're going to vote Republican this time around. Wow. That's just how angry we are. We are so angry that we are willing and going to turn our backs on the Democratic Party. I sat in some of those city council meetings and I looked at and I watched the aldermen totally disregard the voices mm. of the people. And when I was going down there, it was we were coming down every week in the hundreds. And what we said did not matter. And when we were talking about changing Chicago's status as a sanctuary city, and keep in mind, we still have a right to do that. Just like Biden has the right to put forth an executive order to change the crisis as, mm -hmm. at the border, Chicago's mayor has the right to put forth an executive order to change Chicago's sanctuary city. Will he city. do it? Of course he will not do it. Um, if he was going to do it, it would, be, would have been done. And remember, there was a vote within city council where the ordinance to change it was struck down. And yeah. the mayor was the deciding vote. Ah, okay. So I want to play just a little bit. It's actually a clip from your Democratic mayor, Brandon Johnson, just after that city council meeting yesterday that got pretty chippy. And at the end of the day, he is the one you are counting on in all of this, as you just said. It's his vote. It's his, in those meetings, it's his voice. It's his leadership that matters. Let's watch. We're grateful that the state and the county is working towards providing more investments, even though we have to have a more substantive conversation about where those dollars will actually go. 
So I just have one question. Chicago had a choice after Lori Lightfoot, who was breaking COVID protocols to go get her hair done and all sorts of things. They didn't have to go farther left with Brandon Johnson. Why did you vote for him? I voted for Brandon Johnson because I knew him. I voted for Brandon Johnson because I thought that he would be good for Chicago. I voted for Brandon Johnson because, really, I didn't do my homework. Because had I done my homework and paid attention to the alliances and who he was with oh, and who groomed him, I would have known better and I would have voted differently. And that brings me um, to the challenge of really standing up and not just saying to Chicagoans or Illinoisans, but to all voters in this country, it is time for us to stand up and to vote our self-interest. We vote along party lines, especially as African Americans, and that needs to change. We need to start voting for people who are going to promote our self-interest. And that may not be a Democrat, and it may not be a Republican. It may be an independent candidate. It may be a Green Party candidate. But I think that now we have come to a point in this country where we have to stop marrying ourselves to party, stop voting along ethnic lines, mm -hmm. because we're seeing that that is not working for us. And so that is why I will be voting Republican for the first time. Wow, that is a lot. That's a lot of change. And it only took three years with one president to undo what you said, a lifetime of Democratic voting in Chicago, at least for you. Um, does it make a difference if Republicans come to see you this election cycle and talk about this issue on the ground in Chicago? I think the Republicans need to come and see us. I think they need to come and talk to us. Um, because let me just say this, that the Republican Party has not been spotless. And there are certainly some issues that we would love to discuss with them that I think that we can um, have some common ground on. Okay. I think that we can agree to be disagreeable on some issues. But yes, this is the perfect time for the Republican Party to come into the city of Chicago, the state of Illinois, and sit down and talk to the people because we are looking for change. Cotter Trust, God bless you. Thank you so much. You put a lot on a lot of people's minds today. And I <laughs> wish you, you well in Chicago. I know you're dealing with a lot of citizens there. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.